All right. Uh, Hard-fought game up in Logan uh, against Utah State uh, this past weekend. A lot of positives coming out of that game. Um, first of all, our quarterback play, it was great to see Isaac have success. And I uh, thought he really managed the uh, – not managed, that's probably the wrong word. He played exceptionally well in the game uh, once he got settled in. Uh, we got kind of a slow start as a team. Uh, no explanation for that. They – they. Uh, did a good job getting their guys ready. Uh, the Aggies did, and they were, they were, uh, they played very well. They were coached well, and uh, you know, give them credit for, for uh, our slow start. A lot of that goes to them. But uh, anyway, we uh, ended up uh, gaining some momentum as the game went on. Uh, ended up winning uh, what a 38-21, and uh, now it's time to get into conference play. So uh, it's conference play from here on out. Starts at Oklahoma State, uh, tough place to play. From what I hear, I've never been there. Um, about the same size stadium that we have within, you know, just a few hundred people, I believe. And so, so there's a lot of similarities between the two uh, programs. Uh, Coach Gundy's done a great job there for a lot of years. And uh, they're uh, undefeated, 3-0, and uh, highly ranked, and uh, as are we. So should make for a good matchup, and uh, it'll be a – Intriguing start for us to the, uh, you know, as, as the first conference game, official conference game uh, in the Big 12. So, questions? Yes. Justin says, great game on Saturday, by the way. Thank you, so, Justin. How are you planning on getting the secondary out of the compound with Oklahoma State coming up? Because of the game with Utah State, they got torched during the first quarter. They got torched, huh? Yes. Okay, well. Yes. We uh, give Utah State some credit. They made some terrific catches in that first uh, quarter, uh, first half, I guess you could say. Uh, I thought our secondary was uh, better as the game wore on. Uh, ended up intercepting the football a couple times. Um, and made some uh, plays on the ball up the field in addition to the interceptions. But Utah State has some really good receivers. Uh, Bryson Barnes, uh, can't say enough good things about him. He's a competitive kid and he uh, played very well for him and uh, we just you know the entire team needs to get better we, we got uh, deficiencies like everyone in the country does that's why you go out and practice every week but but uh, we felt pretty good about our secondaries play overall um, I think they were right around 50 percent completion percentage which is uh, where you'd like to be as a, as a defense you know keep your opponent to 50 percent is uh, playing some pretty good pass coverage so but we'll, uh, we'll continue to work with those guys and, and uh, try to make uh, improvements. Kyle, you've had a few freshman QBs over the years start for certain games. When you're looking at Isaac, what, a, what, is, what does progression look like to you and how has he kind of tracked in, in kind of your estimation of who he is as a QB? Well, progression is uh, better numbers, uh, you know, numbers that are improving. Uh, I thought he had his best. And this is his first, obviously, start and opportunity to have the, all the reps during the practice week and, and get completely tuned up for the game. So that's uh, you know what you look for is, is the uh, statistical uh, part of it. Uh, his QBR was, was pretty good for the game for a true freshman. Um, he needs to continue to uh, gain command of the offense. Coach Ludwig's offense is not the easiest offense to, to, uh, to learn, but once you get it, it's – it's very effective, and so he's just continuing to uh, attack uh, whatever that learning curve and, and become uh, more comfortable with all his reads and and the, the checks and the you know there's a lot of not only in the throw game but in the run game there's a lot of checks that need to be made in the run game and and he's just continuing to get better and better at that. Uh, after watching the tape, what did you identify? Uh, as the reason the run defense somewhat struggled there against Utah State? Uh, I would say for the game itself, we were not bad, not our usual. Uh, what did they come away with, 140 or 130 yards rushing, which is typically more than we give up, but I give a lot of credit to that running back. He was really, he was physical. Uh, he had good speed, good quickness. He ran with violence, and uh, he's going to gain a lot of yards this year. He's a, he's a quality back, and, and uh, that's probably – as much as anything else in the game is uh, that guy is and his ability. Um, but I thought once, uh, again, once the defense settled in, we got a lot stingier in the run game and, and played much more effectively uh, down, the, uh, down the stretch. 
Coach, you obviously Makai Bernard settling in seems to be at, at RB1, but are you seeing encouraging signs from Mike Mitchell? Yes, we are. And he's been hampered by a, a nagging injury that just keeps showing up every week. Uh, not enough to keep him completely out of the game, but enough where he's got to leave the game at times to, to, uh, to let it uh, stop hurting, I guess. But, but uh, he is, uh, as a freshman, doing a nice job and is a good complimentary back to Makai. He's a bigger back. He's nearly 220 pounds and, and uh, where Makai is uh, about 200 pounds, maybe 205. So, so he's, he's a good compliment, gives us good complimentary uh, rushes and uh, carries uh, in the game. And uh, as does uh, Deshaun Stanley, he's another guy that contributes to the run game. And so between those three guys right now, those three guys seem to be the, the guys that have emerged as the the guys that, uh, at least for the moment, that we're going with. Hey, we've talked a lot about Caleb Lohner and his pass catching abilities and all that, but are you seeing maybe differences in how teams are going against you when he's in the you know field goal kicking, or or what advantage does that give to have him there with his height? His height, that's that, that is the advantage. I mean, his he's. Uh, Six foot seven plus, giant wingspan, so that adds to the elevation he gets, and he's a great leaper. So you put all that together, and that makes him uh, very effective at that role, that particular role in uh, PAT field goal block. He's got his hands on two of them now. Well, would have got two. I think Van got the first one in the, in the, in the game last week, but Caleb looked like it was right on track for him to get it had Van not uh, got the tip. But anyway, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's effective in that role, and I think you're going to see him become more and more of a factor offensively as the season wears on. Remember, he's never, well, I wouldn't say never, but he hasn't played much football in his life, and it's been several years since he has. And uh, you saw that nice catch, and, and Isaac threw a great ball, by the way. That's just how you draw that up, is, is to throw it up where only he can get it, which was the result in the game uh, this past weekend. And, and uh, we're going to try to continue to expand his role and give him more opportunities. and. And he is really a, a tough, eager, uh, has great desire to be uh, to be successful, and so that's that's a big part of it, and that's why he's off to a good start, is because of his attitude. Kyle, as you sort of mentioned, that it, it seems like the plan is to have Cam play. You know, for the past two weeks, what conversations have you had with him in terms of protecting himself and, and going into this game, um, specifically conference play? You've also mentioned that you need him to win this conference. You know, what things are you looking for in terms of, you know, what he might put on tape or how he needs to protect himself going forward? Well, what he needs to put on tape is just what he's been doing for us really ever since he took over. I mean, he's a, he's a, a terrific quarterback. Uh, when he's on his game, he's typically in the top 10 in the nation in QPR, which again is the barometer that I personally feel is the most uh, accurate and best way to assess quarterback play. Um, and yeah, more of the same as far as your answer to or your question, what have we talked about in, you know, as far as getting out of harm's way, just just doing a better job of that. And, and it goes against his grain. He's a, he's a tough, competitive guy, as I've said you know, dozens of times, and it just is not natural for him to, to turn anything down. But he's got to. He's got to, he's got to be able to do that. You mentioned offensive line play was kind of hot and cold the first uh -huh. couple of weeks of the season. Is that still the case? Have you seen them solidify in certain areas, and, and where are they still deficient? Well, it was uh, kind of like the rest of the team. They were not real good in the first quarter offensive line. That was their worst quarter of the game uh, this past weekend. But once that was over with and we started to get uh, into a groove, they played exceptionally well and probably played their best football of the season the last three quarters of the game. We rushed for, what, two hundred, almost 230 yards. and. 5.4 a carry, I believe it was. So the, what we talked about a couple of weeks ago in here, the balance that we're looking for and, and the ability to run the ball over five yards a clip, you know, 200 plus yards a game, that's exactly what happened in this game, although it didn't start out very good. You know, we, we were very uh, average at best in the first quarter. Coach, um, Junior Tafuna, Keanu Tanavasa seem to be really disruptive on the interior. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're hoping to see out of them this season? Absolutely. I thought they played their best game of the season. I say that it's only three games in, but but uh, of the three games, those two guys really did a, an excellent job this particular game. And not only from a, a uh, production standpoint, but their leadership is incredible. Those two guys are vocal. They they have an infectious type of leadership that wears on, that. Uh, 
rubs off on everybody else. And it's not only in games, it's a practice as well, in the weight room, everything they do. Those guys come into the facility with uh, a great attitude. They're upbeat. And uh, like I said, they're exactly the kind of guys you want uh, playing for you. Kyle, what have you seen on tape from Oklahoma State's run game? You know, Ollie Gordon's one of the, the best running backs in the nation. How do you think you guys are going to have to defend them heading into this week and so forth? Yeah, we're going to have to uh, be good tacklers. He's, he's a guy that breaks a lot of tackles. He's a big back. You know, he's over six feet and over 220 pounds and, and just wears you out. I mean, he's, a, he's kind of a bully back there, and uh, that's his style. And, and uh, very rarely is the first guy going to – going to stop his stop his charge but but it's going to be a have to be a concerted effort by the whole front seven to to uh gang tackle and and uh, wrap up and which we didn't do a good job of early in the game this past weekend as we said so we gotta we gotta do uh a better job of that but but uh he's uh, got all our respect and uh all our attention and he's a guy that uh you know he's one of the premier backs in the country i don't know what more you can say Coach, a couple new faces on the defense side of the ball, Jonathan Hall, Rabbit Evans. What did you see from them in their first action this season? Some good stuff, especially from Jono. thought he made a bunch of plays. I think he had 36 snaps, if I remember correctly, the grade sheets that we, uh, we do every week and, and uh, really was productive. He's a very sure tackler. He's, one of the, he's a guy that once he gets his hands on you, it's over. I mean, he can, he can tackle as good as, as anybody we got. Uh, Rabbit, uh, some hot and some cold. He, he made some nice plays, a few assignment errors. He's, he's still learning. He did not get here until, until late in the summer. And so kind of like uh, Coach Ludwig's offense, Coach Scali's defense is pretty involved, and, and, and uh, there's a learning curve there. So, so he's uh, working hard to get up to speed, but uh, he's just still not quite as assignment sound as he needs to be, but the ability's there. He's got a lot of ability. And, and very proud of uh, Cam Calhoun. We haven't talked about him, but he, he stepped in and, and gave us some uh, very good play on Saturday. Had that one nice interception and uh, some other really good uh, coverage reps. So he's that that's huge for us to see him uh, play like he did, and it just gives us that much more depth and one more guy that we can we can go to in the secondary. Karen Reed seems to be a calming force and kind of the communicator on that defensive side. When he's not there. How does your defense change, and kind of what are you looking for, if, you know, for guys to step up, or what, what kind of happens with teams up there? Yeah, well, first of all, his immediate replacement is Sione Foto. He's the one that has taken the, the reps that uh, Kareni, you know, by missing Kareni, he's the guy that's filled in. But uh, John O'Hall is going to be in that role as well and start to get uh, more reps. Uh, a lot more falls on Lander Barton when Kareni's not in there to run the show in the front and make sure that guys are lined up correctly. And, and uh, where they're supposed to be, and that we put a lot of the onus of that uh, the front alignments on the linebackers to get those guys straight, and you know based on formation and communicate uh, as far as where they need to be. So, so Lander Martin's got probably the biggest job when Kareni's not in there because it really falls onto him. Kind of piggybacking off of that, do you think not having Kareni out on the field last week sort of? Impacted how your run defense operated and so forth. Anytime you lose a good football player, there's you know there's uh, some uh, diminished results, and and not that the guys that played for him didn't do a good job because they did, but if it didn't matter who was out there, you know it wouldn't matter. But it does matter. I mean, you put your best guys out there for a reason, and so he's a he's a team leader. He's a, he's a very experienced, very fundamentally and technique sound linebacker that does everything right and uh, seldom, if ever, makes a mental mistake. So he, and he's one of our captains. I mean, you know, so he's, he definitely provides a lot and brings a lot to the table. And, and you do miss those guys when they're not there. But that being said, it's part of the game. So it's next man up mentality, as, a, as it always is. And, and uh, next guy's got to step up, as well as the supporting cast. We talked about that last week, that handling adversity not only comes from your opponent, but from within when you're dealing with injuries and, and things that uh, go awry. Coach Gundy and yourself got your jobs within a few weeks of each other back in, in 2005. Can you compare, contrast, maybe look at some parallels that you know allow you guys to have the same job for, for so long? That's a good question. I, I don't really because uh, you know being in the Pac-12 and obviously the Mountain West before that, completely separate from the Big 12. We didn't have a lot of crossover games with the Big 12, just a few here and there, uh, but certainly have uh, 
uh, been aware of his success. I mean, he's he's done a, a terrific job, and that that's ultimately the bottom line. If you're not successful, you're not going to be in a job for for very long. And so he's done a good job of uh, winning and and being consistent, and uh, seems to be every year. I mean, every year they're they're uh, they're you know what you're going to get from them, and and they their guys play hard, and uh, they're well coached, and uh, their personnel is good. Coach, we know you're a big day game type guy, but uh, the Arizona game was announced 8.15 p.m. Fans love okay, it. What yeah. makes that atmosphere so special? At Rice I don't know, Eccles? but it is uh, it is kind of magical at Rice Eccles and at, at night games. And and uh, I didn't know that. You just, I just realized that Jordy failed to tell me that. Bit of information. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. I, I'll never complain about kickoff times. <clears throat> but <clears throat> preference is sooner the better. I'd rather play at uh, four in the morning if we could, just get up and go. But, but I just hate waiting around for, you know, all day on Saturday for games, but, but uh, it doesn't really matter what I like or don't like. But, but uh, Rice Eccles, back to your, back to your uh, question is, I, I don't know other than the, it just seems to be electric at night. And uh, I don't have a great answer for it, but it sure is an advantage for us, a, a definite advantage. No thanks to Jordy. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank okay. You.